Hey guys, today I have a special treat for you. I have a spreadsheet I put together about three years ago, and the goal was whether it did it make sense to park my SUV that gets about 15 miles per gallon, just park it, and if I bought a EV and drove it, would the savings in gas minus the cost of electricity actually pay for that uh, electric car over a certain period of time. So this is the uh, calculations that I put together for that and it's kind of interesting if you're looking at the return on investment for a vehicle uh, in a nutshell a positive ROI would mean that you're generating cash instead of spending money. Uh, this really shows you what is the best choice. You know, Clearly the cars I'm going to cover here some are definitely have better acceleration, have better features than others, have longer miles than others. But uh, what's really important is that you have enough to get back and forth to work on a daily basis. I selected a miles per year of around 12,000 because that's what the average American drives. And that turns out to be, if you divide that by 365, you get around 32 miles per day, roughly. So um, any electric vehicle that gets more than uh, 30 miles per day uh, with a reasonable buffer, uh, in this case we'll multiply it by two, uh, should be sufficient for most people's daily needs. And of course, uh, everyone will have an, an event where you need to go longer than that. So uh, either a bigger battery range, a uh, some type of onboard generator or uh, range extender uh, can go a long ways to take care of those, you know, that 5% of the time where you really need to go further than uh, what a, low, uh, you know, a 60 to 80 mile battery range would be. So anyway, let's do a quick uh, rundown of this spreadsheet. I'm going to go over it in detail for the first column of the car that was chosen and then I'll very quickly go through the rest of them. Uh, with some of the features. So the features are listed, but, I'm, but this is really a uh, return on investment calculation, meaning can I save enough money to justify the cost of the vehicle and uh, just basically park my SUV, meaning that I'm, I'm not going to sell it and uh, get cash out of it to buy another car, but I'm just going to uh, let it sit idle and the money for this EV has to pay for itself strictly based on the gas versus electric cost savings. So that being said, let's go ahead and go through this real quickly. Um, my cursor is on the first car in the first column, which is the current value for the BMW i3 Rex. Um, again, the cost of gas, if we drive 12,000 miles a year at 15 miles per gallon, and currently gas is now, at least in California, is running $5, actually more than $5 a gallon currently would be a, a you know, $4,000 cost to run that vehicle. Um, however, a cost of electricity at around 13 cents per kilowatt hour uh, would mean that you'd be using about $300 worth of electricity per year um, with the nominal value or miles per kilowatt hour that the vehicle would get. So based on that, the uh, new vehicle cost is about 48 minus the rebates, federal rebates, um, this is a little bit loose, but it's around 42, 42.5 uh, for the purchase cost plus sales tax plus uh, liability insurance. Again, if you're buying new, you're probably going to have full comprehensive and collision on that vehicle. If you're buying a used car, you might be able to get away with just liability only, which it, it, that in itself is a big savings. So total cost for the brand new BMW i3 Rex would be about $55,000. Uh, there's some other little things like free charging for a, a certain amount with a new car in this case. So make a long story short, you take the uh, savings out over six years and you would be in the hole about $32,000 if you bought a brand new Rex. It, meaning it wouldn't pay for itself in the uh, gas savings alone to drive the electric car for this mileage for this many years. So let's take a look at a used vehicle. Uh, a used uh, 
BMW i3 BEV with 20,000 miles on it is currently going for about 22,000. And if you go through all these calculations, and I won't do that again to save some time, but it boils down to a net loss of about $5,200 over six years. So again, it would not pay for itself to do that. A uh, used 20,000 mile 2015 Rex uh, with a $17,000 cost, you could actually pull it out with over six years, you would uh, write yourself a $208 check. So in that case, it would actually pay for itself over a six year period with this type of a mileage. So now we're looking at a net positive with a fairly older version of the car, but because the cost is lower, uh, it actually would pay for itself. So let's keep going. I'm going to go over to some other cars we looked at here, which was a brand new Leaf. Uh, again, with the uh, federal rebate, we're looking at around 24 or 5, which is pretty darn good cost for a vehicle that uh, can get uh, almost you know, over 200 miles range. Uh, however, it does not have any thermal battery management, which is a big concern with most people in the um, industry that are looking at these cars. Uh, net takeaway is it's still going to cost you about thirteen and a half thousand dollars at the end of six years to do the uh, to drive this car. A used Leaf uh, is not really that much cheaper. With the prices of the used vehicles in the last six months, uh, it's getting less and less economical to buy a used car uh, in terms of return on investment. Uh, however, if you go through the calculations, uh, it is quite a bit less of a loss at about uh, $5,300. A used Bolt, you would think that they would be uh, reasonably priced with the fire issues they've been having recently, but it turns out that they're not. Uh, at 2018, it's going for around 23,000, so it's gonna be uh, 7,000 in the hole over six years if you bought a used Bolt. A new Bolt, it'd be almost 20,000 in the hole. A uh, used Volt, Chevy Volt, with a V. Uh, the electric only range is a bit on the short side, with only 53 miles. So it could do a daily commute for the average American, uh, since that's only 30 miles. And the uh, gas generator range is quite large at 370, so it's capable of doing longer trips. So if the value of this car was lower, which it was up until six months ago, this would have been a reasonably good proposition. However, with the current used car prices, it still would be about 7,000, almost 8,000 in the hole, negative uh, over six years. Uh, a Tesla Model 3, great car, great range, good network. The problem is the cost. Even after six years of displacing the cost of gas, you're still 45,000 roughly in the hole by buying a Tesla. So strictly looking at it from a financial standpoint, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, one of the interesting cars that actually does come out positive is a uh, Fiat 500e. I wanted to mention that currently they're going for around 13,700 is the uh, cheapest I could find with about 20,000 miles on them. Three years ago, when I first did this calculation, you could pick one up for about six thousand. So it was a great deal at six thousand mile or six thousand dollars for that car, and your savings would be way high uh, if you could handle the fairly low range uh, without any ex uh, range extender. So that would be the drawback. Great if you're only doing city uh, or short range driving and had no need for a longer range. Which in this case, if you were parking an SUV, you could do that. Uh, it would be a great option. Uh, finally, the two other options I added here was a used Prius Prime. It only has 25 miles of uh, battery only range, which really isn't enough for the average American without using some of the gas range. And because of that, the, uh, and the cost is quite high right now for a Prius Prime even a used one with 15,000 miles is one I found in 2018. So out the door, it's gonna cost you about 17,000 at the end of the day. 
to drive this. And just for fun, I threw in a brand new ID4. I'm currently going for about 43, 44. This is actually a used one with a few hundred miles. And uh, it would cost you about 35,000 in the whole ever, over six years. So you know, clearly the, ga the gas savings alone is not sufficient to be able to pay for itself. So that's what it looks like. Um, I'm currently driving a uh, i3 Rex, which I had bought several years ago during the first analysis of this. And it seems like it's pretty much on track with what I've been doing. And uh, again, if you're looking strictly from a financial standpoint, can you park a big SUV that has bad gas mileage and actually pay for an EV over six years time by the gas savings only? The answer is yes, but you would have to use one of the older versions of electric vehicles, possibly an older Leaf, a Fiat 500 or an older BMW model. Uh, you could potentially have cost break even or gain on it slightly by doing so. That does come with risks, however. Um, most of these older models have a fairly short range, a uh, fairly small battery pack, which means you actually have a pretty high duty cycle on the battery, meaning you're using it a lot. So the risk of degradation of the battery over time is going to be higher than you would expect with some of these uh, newer vehicles with much, much larger battery packs. And it can spread the load over many more battery cells, uh, even if you're using it at a high rate. And of course you have the uh, ability to do longer range trips when necessary with those larger battery packs. Anyway, I hope this was informative for you. I, I found it interesting uh, just how much of a difference the cost savings would be if you, again, take your uh, blinders off and look strictly at it from a cost savings, not from the standpoint of in features or what's the coolest car. Is this really financially what makes the most sense? And um, there are a couple cars that would actually pay for themselves if you uh, do the math. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, we've got more content coming soon, so please stay tuned, subscribe, and like this channel if you are enjoying this content. Thanks.